I was 22, my wife's 21. We had had our first daughter. We wanted our kids to be very close together and we'd like to have a large family. Um, so after she was born, we tried for about a year and a half, no luck. Um, so we decided to go ahead and pursue adoption kind of in the meantime. We're about two years into our marriage. You have to be two years into your marriage to adopt through most agencies. Uh, we don't want to do profound special needs. That's a calling. We don't have it. When you start the process, you're very selfish. You're thinking of the things you'll be okay with. And you have a checkbox. I'll be okay with a low birth weight. I'll be okay with a cleft palate. When we got the email about Josiah, it was basically telling about this baby who was born without a brain. He may live a week to a month. It was clearly outside the range of what we had said we were willing to accept. But it was just one of those things, as soon as I opened the email, it was like God was saying, that's your baby. I would be lying if I said it, it was an easy decision, because it wasn't. And then over the next five days, we cried and prayed, and God broke us down. And that was what made us call them back and say, hey, we think we're willing to do this. Um, pray with us and tell us what's next. <laughs> and they said, well, you need to have a burial plan. And it, it's hard to go from, we want to bring this life into our home to already thinking about how you're going to bury that child. A lot of the trials that we've had have turned into something different than we thought they were at the beginning when they started happening. And just through a conversation that was casual and asking for support of just prayer, ended up being, hey, we have a burial plot, you can have that. So they crammed three months of paperwork into four days and we had to turn what should have been 18 months worth of support raising for this adoption into four days. And God showed up with abundance. He provided that $7,800 and more. We adopted Josiah and then we brought him home and four days later found out that we were pregnant with our youngest daughter. And if I would have gotten pregnant in that year and a half, we wouldn't have adopted Josiah. So I believe that God was intentionally waiting so that we would be able to bring this baby into our family. And then it was like a double blessing. I mean, he has a big open fontanelle in the top of his head. It's just basically a, like a soft spot in a baby that just never closes up, except his was most of his head. So we have this baby who to us is fragile already, but now we have other issues. And we have a one-year-old that we're still catering to. Every morning we wake up not knowing if he's going to wake up with us. He has good days, um, he has bad days, and every time a bad day happens, we don't know if it's the beginning of the end. Lots of hospital visits, lots of uh, neurologists that didn't understand why he was alive. Um, and God really just gave us the wisdom uh, and, and the discernment to take good advice and bad advice. Since we brought him home, we've been through two major surgeries with him. His head was growing exponentially, very fast, uh, and it was opening his head up, basically. And so the challenges for that is a, uh, a shunt uh, goes into the brain and drains fluid. Well, he has no brain, literally no brain. He just has sacs of spinal fluid in there. So they were worried about how it's going to seal. So that was an amazing feat. The second one was when they put the feeding tube in and we were in the hospital for about two weeks and I was eight months pregnant <laughs> and we're thinking, oh my goodness, you know, how are we going to get through this? And you have neurologists who are saying, are you sure you want to do these things? He, you're going to have to, what if he gets 15 and you have to flip him over every two hours? And, and in that moment, that's when it started. And I, yes, I want to, I want him to be 15. I want to flip him over. And that love, that unconditional love, hit and it went okay this is for real that was when we found out that we were actually able to have nurses come so a week before our youngest daughter was born we had a full-time nurse that was here with jojo and that's been continuing we were obedient by only by his grace and then when it was hey we're gonna have three babies in the house all in diapers this is gonna be crazy he provided us help. The doctor said whatever time he is here, it's going to be a vegetable. Um, I was reading stories online of kids that just screamed, cried, like the whole time that had his same condition. I can talk to him and get him to laugh at me and not a quick laugh like a baby without a brain. We're talking about lasting joy. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> yeah, I got you. That's right. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, Daddy's gonna get to you. <laughs> we can play a song that he likes, and I can play a song he doesn't like, and then I can play a song he likes again, and he'll respond to it. It has given us a very deep appreciation for life, um, the time that we have here. It's shown us to treasure every giggle, every dirty diaper even, <laughs> um, because that's just stuff that, you know, we only get to have that for a little bit of time here. Me and my wife really believe through that process we, we found salvation. We, we didn't know what a relationship with God really looked like until we had been broken down in that situation and God, we can't do this. We know, we, we grew up in the church. We know all these things, but we never felt it. Um, it's not about you. <laughs> it's not about you fulfilling your family. It's not about you doing a good thing. Um, it's not about any of that. It's about obeying God. And if He's calling you to do it, you need to do it and not just say, you know, like how we started out with making a list of, well, God, this is what I'm willing to do for you. So here you go. Uh, men, it's intimidating. Uh, uh, even men of faith, it, it is an intimidating thing, and uh, I would encourage you to grab a hold of your spouse and pray over those things. Start the process. Um, once you're in the process, have as little opinion as possible, and God will do a work in your heart.